Good evening, I'm Hartford HealthCare's Tina Verona. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I am here with Dr. Omar Eaton. He is the medical director of the Hartford HealthCare Cancer Institute's Melanoma and Skin Center. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Tina, for having me. Yeah, well, we encourage you to ask questions. We're talking about melanoma. Obviously, we're getting into the summer months. The sun is finally shining. Um, so we do encourage you to ask questions. Melanoma has certainly come a long way um, in research and in treatments. We're going to get to all of that, a lot of ground to cover. But first, I want to st start, Dr. E, in talking about um, the age groups that we're seeing with melanoma. We're seeing that certain age group, but we're also seeing younger folks developing melanoma. Talk to us about who, who is being diagnosed. Uh, very good question. The, um, uh, there is currently an epidemic in... Uh, folks over the age of 60 to 65. Mm. Um, so uh, these are, uh, especially in men, where it's the epidemic is much worse. Paradoxically, it's the men who are least likely to examine themselves mm -hmm. or their spouses. Um, and um, so I think one very important message that everyone needs to spread is that uh, your parents or grandparents need to pay attention to the moles on their body um, their spouses need to look at them, their primary care physicians, their dermatologists, um, because um, if you can pick off a melanoma early, you can cure, cure him um, or her. Um, usually it's women who bring in their, their uh, spouses, mm -hmm. and I've been in the field for 30 years. I think I've had four men now bring in a spouse with, I don't like this thing on your back. Mm -hmm. um, uh, usually, it's the woman bringing themselves in mm -hmm. and bringing in, dragging in, <laughs> not bringing in, dragging in their spouses. Right, right. Um, we need to fix that right away. Yeah. It's 2018. Right. We've got to stop this. And, <laughs> and especially, <laughs> like you know, you said, I mean, w and we're going to get into the treatments, um, but yeah. there are some great treatments out there that early detection is so vital yeah. because in years past, um, you know, melanoma, uh, y there weren't many treatments. Um, but we want to, I want to first talk about what we should be looking for. And really when you talk about melanoma, it's really knowing your ABCs. So yeah. let's just kind of give the folks out there just what they need to know when looking, when they're doing these observations, what they should be looking for. Well, uh, ABCs is ABCs. Yeah. Um, any growth on your body um, that is uh, asymmetric, has border irregularity, has a weird color, whether it's black, brown, blue, or red, or even no color. Um, but maybe the growth is the size of a pencil eraser or larger. Um, these are all worrisome. Furthermore, and the easiest thing to pick off if you're paying attention, is whether something is growing, itching, or God forbid it's bleeding, because mm -hmm. that implies much more risk of metastatic disease. Um, the best way to keep, we all take pictures of, you know, the Statue of Liberty, mm -hmm. you know, Lincoln Memorial. Uh, there's nothing wrong with pulling out your cell phone and taking, and having someone or yourself do a selfie, mm -hmm. take a picture of anything on your body that looks irregular. Okay. Stick a plastic ruler in there and take a picture of it, mark it with a date. And that way, over time, it, when you question it, like a year from now, you could always go back and see, is it the same size? Does it right. look the same? Right. And that's a good way to get because uh, started. Cha because it can change, and, yeah. and that obviously is of concern when, yeah. when a mole is changing. Yeah. Um, let's talk about in terms of, uh, you know, obviously if that happens, you should, you should contact your physician right away. Um, let's talk about, let's, I really want to get into the treatment because there's so many treatment options right yeah. there for melanoma. There's, there's drug therapies, there's immunotherapy. Let's get into what we're seeing right now in terms yeah. of treating melanoma. Well, uh, first let me tell you that melanoma has really gone from the bottom of the list of treatable cancers um, for most of the last century um, to now the very top of the list of, uh, uh, of, uh, this is, where all the greatest scientists in the world have come through with not just one massive venue for uh, drug development and successes, which is immunotherapy, which you're seeing on TV mm -hmm. with all the ads, but also in the area of uh, precision medicine where we're identifying 
t gene targets, mutations that are driver mutations that we can shut down with pills. Mm -hmm. So these are two world-class fronts. And the most interesting that's ha thing is in the last four months, there have been so many papers in the New England Journal of Medicine, even just a few days ago, um, with uh, showing that if you can use these treatments even earlier than where they were developed in stage four or advanced disease, but use them in stage three disease, you could actually outperform standards of care. So, um, uh, and uh, these are truly, truly great insights. It took a century of evolution of thought to get there. The immunotherapies involve the notion of, um, uh, the, the best way to say it is uh, removing an invisibility cloak around your tumor. Mm. Um, we spent a century trying to overdrive the immune response, but we found out that the immune response against yourself was, was harnessed or restricted. It, it's regulated so it cannot attack itself. Uh, easily. Mm -hmm. um, so while we were throwing many drugs to augment the immune response, what we really had needed to do was to block the regulation of the immune response so it had freedom again to attack the enemy. Um, and so these drugs are attacking um, uh, tolerance inducing features of the immune response. So now that when a T in the T cell, the immune cell that attacks tumors, mm -hmm can be thought of as a bumblebee. Mm -hmm. It might attack once, but then it dies. Right. Um, but with these new antibodies, we can get these T cells to attack, attack some more, proliferate, attack wow. some more. Wow. And when the That's immune system sees the enemy, um, even if it's a mass, uh, a big mass, like the size of a uh, golf ball or a baseball, mm -hmm. um, uh, if it can see the enemy, it can reduce that down to nothing in as short as a month wow. um, with hardly any symptoms. Wow. It's the most uh, amazing thing. Yes, we still have to deal with off-target effects. Right. So when you remove an invisibility cloak around the tumor, you might remove it around other things other in the things. human body right. and create side effects. Mm -hmm. So that's what our job is, is to try and control the side effects. Right. But this is uh, having used all the previous treatments, a lot of very potent immunostimulants. Mm -hmm. um, this is so much more reasonable. It's outpatient therapy. You get an infusion. Um, we have time to sort out the rate of change of things. Mm -hmm. So if there are side effects getting out of control, we know how to stop them. We know them. how to manage it. And we're in a good place. Right. Um, so when it works, as a matter of fact, now the data is showing from the early 2000s People who got treated on the original trials, um, if they got out three years without any bad news, even if they had little lumps still around there in the body, mm -hmm. they're actually have, they're fully alive with no growth 10 years later. Wow. Which wow. means for That's stage four disease, yeah. we've actually, we're actually probably curing about 20% of patients. Whereas, yeah. what, maybe yeah. five years ago that was unheard of even? Yeah. Or 10 years about ago? 10 years, about five 10 years, five ago. to 10 but years ago, yeah. yes, there'll always be some patients, usually around the 5% right. range, mm -hmm. where you wonder how did they get so lucky? Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, now it's uh, more frequent. All these studies, uh, we went from median survival of six months in stage four disease mm -hmm. to now over three years. Wow which means half the patients are living more than three years. Right, right. Um, so it's, it's truly a miracle in my so lifetime. So while, absolutely, and so while you see the numbers of people being diagnosed go up, you're yeah. seeing it sort of level off because of these treatments like immunotherapy. Hey, Tina, right? you got it right. Uh, so we are, uh, even though we are uh, doing a good job, not a great job, but a good job in early detection, um, we need to do a better job. Um, so we're diagnosing melanoma earlier and there and there is an epidemic as I pointed out in folks over the age of 60 so the numbers keep going up yet the death rate is leveled mm -hmm. often it stayed level now for quite a while um, and that's got multiple factors involved in that statistic but the main thing is at least the death rate isn't going up yeah and that's good and that's very good yes we are having a great discussion with mm -hmm. Dr. Omar Eaton in case you're just joining us he's the medical director of the Hartford Healthcare Cancer Institute Melanoma and Skin Center we encourage you to ask a question um, all things melanoma and skin cancer related um, let's talk about clinical trials you know we sure. have a partnership with Memorial Sloan Kettering we have access to hundreds of clinical trials here at the Hartford Healthcare Cancer Institute what do we have for melanoma 
Okay, so um, first let me give you the second half of that equation, mm -hmm. which was not only the immunotherapy, but we have all these brand new signal transduction inhibitors. Mm -hmm. Those are mostly pills mm -hmm. that will, you give, a, it's almost like taking M&Ms. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, there can be side effects, there will right. be side effects. I mean, we're trying to kill cancer after all, and there isn't right. much difference between a cancer cell and a human cell, but the side effects are manageable, mm -hmm. but these pills are remarkable as they can actually be like a switch and turn off a tumor. So we have, uh, we're now entering the era of combinations of immunotherapy drugs on one hand, mm -hmm. and we're, en we're always discovering new targets to design drugs against on the other hand, and also we have to combine those. Right. So um, uh, what Hartford HealthCare has decided to do um, is build a phase one drug development unit. It's currently mm -hmm. being built. I'm in the meetings every week and we're watching the, the, the uh, facility uh, move along. As a matter of fact, it should be open by the third quarter of this year and mm -hmm. uh, enrolling patients. Mm -hmm. We have already open trials at Memor uh, for Memorial Sloan Kettering. Um, their frontline trial is our frontline trial. Uh, we're trying a way to use two of the immunotherapy drugs targeting completely different things mm -hmm. together. This is already FDA approved, but what's nice about this trial is it's an adaptive dosing regimen. Mm. So that uh, because there are side effects, there's a 50% rate of serious uh, side, side effects. effects. Um, and uh, there's, so in the never ending pursuit of better treatments, we also want them to be tailored to individual right. patients. Right. So we call it an adaptive dosing mm. trial mm -hmm. so that we can um, uh, adjust the dosing of the two agents and, and then scan them and then treat them slightly differently based on the results because of the scans. Because it's not a one size fits all. So that's, exactly. that's a really yeah. tailored, personalized approach yeah. um, to the treatment and, and a really individualized um, goal and every patient is different. Yeah. Saying that, we used to say every patient is different. Yeah. And then we found out that 40% of uh, skin melanoma patients have a uh, BRAF V600E mutation. Mm -hmm. Boy, we didn't know that back in the 1980s, I'll tell you that. Yeah. But now that we know that, uh, you, we can give them a pair of drugs like the Parafinib and Trametinib and just uh, control the disease. Um, but there are and there are side targets too. Right? There are so side effects, yeah. but they mostly the, the, the side effects are manageable. There are people I've got many octogenarians mm -hmm. who are being treated either with the immunotherapy mm -hmm. or with these pills. Right. We do not discriminate on the basis of age right. uh, at all. Uh, whereas the older treatments, you almost had to be an astronaut to get them mm -hmm. because the side effects were so brutal. Right. But the you can manage the side effects now. Yes. So and that's, I think, is key. Yeah. That, that is a key uh, it, part. It, it's before you couldn't do that. Yeah. I mean, I think I learned back in the last decade uh, that uh, the, there were no limits to what patients would tolerate right. to stay alive right. in some of course. cases. Of course. And now with these newer treatments, whether it's immunotherapy or signal transduction, uh, they can get to complain about pretty mild side effects, which right. for the other patients, my God, they're having a great time. For sure. these folks, it's like, oh my God, I threw up once. Yeah, right, <laughs> you know? right. I mean, it's not, it's not very, I mean, it's not nice to have side effects, right, but right. this is really mostly, uh, they're, Manageable. as I said, if you have yeah. oxygen, if you have 80, I'm treating an 88 year old patient I just saw a mm -hmm. few days ago. Um, and the, uh, the reality is that if you can treat an 88 year old patient with lots of other comorbidities with yeah. these drugs, yeah. um, it gives you an idea that this can be done in anybody. We Abs do not have the limitations we had. Absolutely, and yeah. anybody, let's talk, uh, let's go back to the age groups again because you mentioned earlier yeah. that we're seeing melanoma in the younger population, in yeah. the teenage population, so oh. I want to address that. Oh, I'm so glad you raised this very important issue uh, right on the money. Uh, so. Um, just like cigarette smoking, um, you have to think of tanning booths as bad. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, now luckily people, that message is getting out. Yeah. There are laws being passed um, all over the country that's pretty much banning tanning booths from, uh, in children or folks under the age of 17. Um, uh, like in the state of Connecticut, we're trying to move that to 18. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll point out in Massachusetts, I think they just managed to get a ban on cigarette smoking in folks up to the age of 21. Mm -hmm. Because what we're discovering in society is that um, folks between 17 and 21 are actually quite vulnerable 
um, they're transitioning from being students to adults, and they're dealing with huge costs of college or not being able to afford college or not having done well in high school. Mm -hmm. um, they're worried about losing their boyfriends. They're worried right. about proms. And, and image, of course, it's is a big all thing. Image. Yeah, it's, images. it's a very sensitive, exquisitely sensitive time. And that's exactly the time between 17 and 21 that people actually pick up really outrageous habits. Right. They're such vulnerable as to Smoking cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, are vulnerable to it. And it's usually folks who aren't doing very well because either life circumstances, their families, uh, leaving school, leaving boyfriends, mm -hmm. leaving girlfriends. Um, there's a variety of vulnerabilities in the 18 to 21 yeah. year old group right. that uh, we're, we're worried about. And going in for that one uh, experience in this tanning booth for a prom is one thing. It's, sh it's still frowned upon, yeah. but a lot of people pick up a habit of going to tanning booths at that point mm -hmm. and you get into that culture and that's a very bad culture I cannot tell you how miserable it is to see 21-year-olds dying from stage 4 melanoma. I've had it happen many a time. Mm. Some of them just delivering babies and things. It is the scariest thing. Mm. Um, it makes you want to cry. And, and we don't want to see that. They have a lot and of it's folks. because the light is so close to you yes. and you're, and you're in the there dose. for so long. So they claim it's a UVA and it's the safer UV. Mm -hmm. Because UV, B, and C is where you have the biggest incremental threats. On the other hand, the intensity of it is sufficient yeah. um, that uh, you're really paying, just like with cigarettes, to hurt yourself. And yeah. there really is no need to do that. Furthermore, um, by avoiding tanning booths, you will look good. I mean, age is not a disease. There's no reason for wrinkles except from years of sun exposure right. when you're old. So if you want to look good when you're older, you don't want to have common skin cancers, which are directly linked with any type of UV exposure. Sure and you don't want to get melanoma, it's a good idea not to be doing tanning booths or even spending too much time in the sun. Most people um, commute to the Cape. By the time they get there, it's 10 a.m., 11 a.m., and by the time they want to go home, prime it's 3 sun. p.m. Right. That's prime UVB, mm -hmm. UVC exposure. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, those blistering sunburns when you're a kid, not a good move. You don't want to be doing that. Yeah, right. um, and so. Uh, you want some sun, you need to have some sun. Wearing uh, loose-fitting clothing, a broad brim hat is clever. Mm -hmm. um, if you have to be out there for um, uh, a long time, like on the beach, it's good to use suntan, uh, su uh, sunscreen. Mm -hmm. Usually SPF uh, 15 to 30 is adequate. You don't need to go more, but it's more expensive mm -hmm. and doesn't give you much of an incremen incremental gain. Right. Um, so. Uh, but you have to change that every two hours, especially if you're on the beach. You have to recoup. Reapply. Re reapply. Yeah. That's yeah. the key. Right. I want to talk <laughs> about an event <laughs> happening on June 6th at West mm -hmm. Farms Mall yeah. um, that we partnered last year with Channel 3 on this event, and it was it was a, a huge success. I mean, we saw so many people coming into the mall. You yourself was there. Yeah. You're going to be there again this year. It's on June 6th. 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. you're going to be speaking all about melanoma. You're going to be taking questions. And then from 10 to 2 is going to, we're going to have dermatologists there, a surgical oncologist, a medical oncologist, a retinal specialist there um, looking at suspicious lesions. And, you know, I think last year we ended up finding um, huh. four people or maybe even more yeah. um, with cancerous lesions. So it's, an yeah. it's a life-saving event, and I can't stress how important it is. Yeah. Um, talk to me about um, this year, and, and I know you're excited to participate yeah. in this oh event. Oh, yeah, we're all again. looking forward to it. Yeah. The, um, I tell you, the one advantage of going to that meeting is you'll, you'll at least see some pictures. Right now, you're just looking at us, but we'll show you some melanomas and you can see what they look like. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to have a very, a much bigger event this year because we're bringing in not just one, but three dermatologists, mm -hmm. two surgical oncologists. That's what they do is melanoma. Yeah. Um, um, and a, uh, we just recruited in our, in our plan for melanoma a melanoma retinal specialist. Uh, coming from the best places in the country. He's awesome, uh, and he'll be there as well. Um, to, so he'll uh, look in folks' eyes and do a eye, melanoma eye screening. Mm. Melanoma of the eye is completely different from melanoma of the skin. It's mm -hmm. got the same name. It is sort of the same derivation, but the molecular basis is different. Um, and it's important to just diagnose those early. So that's going to be an mm -hmm. added feature. Plus, we have more dermatologists to handle the crowds. 
Um, we're obviously not going to be able to undress everybody uh, uh, yeah, in right, a mall, right, right. and they're not bringing all their equipment with them. Right. On the other hand, um, if they see something they don't like, they're going to give you a nice straightforward plan to deal with it, mm -hmm. and they might also lighten the load a little if they find out that things that you're looking at aren't that serious after all. Right, and it's a real educational event too. Yeah. I mean, this is this is a chance for folks to come by, to talk to you, yeah. to talk to the dermatologist, ask questions, um, and if there is something that's visible um, yeah. that that may be suspicious, um, you can yeah. take a quick look at. But but it's such a it's such an important event, and, and can't well, stress enough. Um, uh, I'll add one thing there, which is uh, they don't even add skin cancer to the list of bad cancers in all the stats because it is the number one cancer by far. If you were to add up all the other cancers, that's how, I mean, pretty much skin cancer is prevalent in society mm -hmm. to such large numbers. Um, but the nice thing is if you find them early, you can cure them. So right. uh, this is gonna be a quick screening for most. Anyone who has something they, they don't like, mm -hmm. they just show it to us. We'll right. figure out what to do about it. Um, and, um, uh, um, but the um, early detection is is the name of the game, and this will be just a great opportunity. Do not neglect your skin; it covers all of you. Right, right. Most of us forget to look at ourselves. We're so busy helping everybody else mm -hmm. in everything, mm -hmm. we don't even look at our own bodies. Right. Y'all are going to have to get out of that bad habit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. know your body. Yeah, that's always key too. Dr. Omarine, thank you so much. Sure. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, and Likewise. we always learn something from you. So, thank you. thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you on June sixth at West Farms Mall, nine to ten. Dr. Eaton will be speaking, and then from ten to two, um, we'll be doing that educational session on melanoma. So we hope to see you there. You can call one eight five five HHC here for more information. Thanks once again for joining us. I'm Hartford HealthCare's Tina Verona. We'll see you soon. Thank you.